A key skill in analog electronics is knowing how to get the signal that you need out of a mixture of signals. Imagine for a second that you've sent an AC electrical signal full of data to a satellite in space. That's over 200 miles through a rough atmosphere. By the time the signal reaches the satellite, it is full of garbage and noise. To combat that noise, we have two tools at our disposal. One is called a filter, the other an amplifier. In this lesson, we'll start to learn about what a filter is and how to build one. If you remember back to the introduction to modern electronics course, resistors acted like funnels with larger resistor values letting less current through and capacitors and inductors acted like reservoirs holding electrical charge in either an E field or an electromagnetic field. That fundamental theory is true for DC electronics but with AC, things get a little trickier since the current is constantly flowing forward and backward. When an AC signal passes through a resistor, the same effect as with DC is seen. The resistor acts like a funnel, and the number of electrons that can go through the resistor at the same time is limited. However, with capacitors and inductors, things in AC are a little different. When an AC signal like this travels by a capacitor connected to ground, Certain frequencies of the signal will prefer to go through the capacitor to ground, and the rest will continue through the circuit. The formula to know which frequencies will pass through and which will get filtered looks like this. If we were to design a low-pass filter for a cutoff frequency of 1 kHz, then the response of the filter to different frequency input would look like this graph. The frequencies lower than 1 kHz pass through the filter unchanged but anything higher is altered and filtered out. This is called a low-pass filter since only frequencies lower than the cutoff frequency, 1 kHz in this example, will pass through the filter unchanged. If we perform the same experiment but instead use an inductor connected to ground, again certain frequencies of the signal will prefer to go through the inductor to ground and the rest will continue through the circuit. The formula to know which frequencies will pass through and which will get filtered looks like this. Again, if we were to design a high pass filter for a cutoff frequency of 1 kHz, the response of the filter to different frequency input would look like this graph. The frequencies higher than 1 kHz pass through the filter unchanged, but anything below is altered and filtered out. Since only higher level frequencies make it through the filter, this is called a high pass filter. So now, let's use our audio signal generator and play around with making some high-pass and low-pass passive filters. For this experiment, we'll need a breadboard jumper wire kit, and from the components kit, we'll use a stereo cable, the stereo jack breakout board, two 9-volt battery connectors, five 10 kilo-ohm resistors, two 10 nanofarad capacitors, 100 ohm, 100 kilo ohm, and 1 mega ohm resistors, a 100 microfarad capacitor, and finally, a 1 microfarad, 10 microfarad, 100 microfarad, 10 nanofarad, and 100 nanofarad capacitors. In addition to these parts, we use a laptop, two 9 volt batteries, and a pair of headphones. Now, let's follow the schematic and build up the standard tone generating circuit that we've been using throughout this course.
With the circuit built and without any filter, we hear the tone nice and loud. We can see it on the oscilloscope. Let's click this tab on the oscilloscope program to see the frequency graph. This graph shows you how much power our signal has. Now if we add in a resistor plus capacitor filter, again the formula looks like this, the tone will gradually become softer as we increase the capacitance. So now let's go through and test out each capacitor's filtering effect on the tone one by one. And when we add the last capacitor of 100 microfarad, we can barely even hear the signal. And now let's turn things around and test out building some RC high pass filters. Like we saw before, this type of filter allows higher frequencies through and filters out lower frequencies. We'll perform the same experiment as before and use each capacitor in the RC high pass filter one by one. So as you can see, both high and low pass filters are able to change the tone by filtering out certain frequencies. But what's important to take away from this experiment is that they do it differently. A 100 microfarad RC low pass filter made the tone disappear, while a 100 microfarad RC high pass filter allowed the tone to be heard loud and clear. Although we briefly went through some possible applications of filters, let's look at another one. A very fun example is to look at the old tuning equipment of an AM radio. Very often, a large capacitor like this one was used. When the tuning capacitor was moved, it changed the capacitance value and therefore the filtered frequencies, allowing only your specific AM radio station to be heard. Modern filters will use surface mount parts or will be embedded inside of PC board and not the gigantic through hole parts we have in our breadboard. Even more extreme is some filters like the ones used inside of cell phones, which are actually inside of the IC silicone of the cell phone, meaning that they are so tiny you would need a microscope to see them. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory.
Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that we've seen how to build simple low-pass and high-pass filters, we need to go further and explore the RLC filter.